Hi, Professor Zioma. I don't expect to welcome my viewers to another interesting lesson on the classifying of matter. I want you to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. I know it has been a while. It has been up to a week. I posted my last video. I thank you for the patience and the expectancy of this new video. Today we'll be looking at matter and the objective of this lesson is that by the end of this lesson the student should be able to differentiate between the three types of matter and identify and explain the different properties of matter. What is the nature and importance of chemistry? Chemistry is a discipline of science consigned with the study of matter, including its structure its composition and changes that occur when it is exposed to various situations. And we know that chemistry not only investigates the qualities of matter, but also how and why it changes. We want to know how matter changes and why it changes. And why is chemistry useful? Chemistry is important because it is central to the understanding of discipline such as biology, physics, geology, material sciences, medicine, and many other branches of engineering. Chemistry plays a major role in our economy. You know, and chemistry and chemicals affect our daily lives in a wide variety of ways. That is why chemistry is useful. Well, everything we put on what we eat, so the food, they are of chemicals, and we must understand this discipline is considered to be a central science. When we talk about matter, we have three states of this matter. We have the solid state, we have the liquid, and we have the gaseous state of matter. These are the major states, though we have also the plasma level. But for this class, we'll be looking at only the solid, liquid, and gas. You know, we say that the solid has fish shape. It has mass and it has volume. It has a reduced kinetic energy. You know, the shape of every solid is fixed. Like we have here an example of a model block. You can see there that it is fixed. It has its mass. It has volume. You know, and it has what we call reduced kinetic energy when applied to heat. The forces, kinetic energy forces are smaller. That's why we say reduced compared to the liquid and the gas. We have the liquid state of matter. The liquid state we have given an example of someone pouring oil into a, 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 a glass plate there. The liquid has fixed volume. The liquid, any container you use, you can pour the liquid. The liquid is measured in the container you're, you're, you're using. According to the container sizes, you can add your liquid to those sizes. It has no definite form, you know, and when applied to heat, it has increased kinetic energy into it. Matter also has particles called atoms. And matter has properties. Another state of matter is what we call a gas. In a gas, the gas molecules move extremely rapidly, colliding with one another and with the walls of the container. This random motion allow gas molecules to fill their container. So the volume of a gas sample is the volume of the container. Any container you put takes the volume of that gas. We'll give an example here of a gas plant, releasing gas plant an oil gas plant. 
gas is being released in that flow station we have here. A gas occupies the size of the container and has increased kinetic energy. You know, it is colliding, and that is why it is able to, to assume the size of the container. So these are the three basic states, the solid state, the liquid state, and the gaseous state. We have the physical properties of matter, and um, we also have the chemical properties of matter. So let's look at the properties of matter. We we'll ask ourselves these questions. Are these properties determined without changing the identity of the substance? The answer is yes and no. If the property of the substance are changed, then a chemical properties will be formed. But if the properties of the substance are not changed, we will form what we call physical properties. Under the physical properties, we ask ourselves again, does the property depend on the amount of substance? We also have yes or no. If the property depends on the amount of substances, we form what we call extensive physical properties. That is a physical property that will change if the amount of matter changes. The mass will change. The volume will change. The length will change and the shape will change if the amount of matter changes. And then that physical property that will not change depending on the amount of substance is what we call the intensive physical property. A physical property that will be the same regardless of the amount of matter. The color will not change. The melting point will not change. The boiling point will not change. The density of that compound will not change. The malleability will not change. The conductivity will not change. That is electrical flow through the substance. It will not change because we have increased the mass. Those are what we call intensive properties. The melting point will not change. The melting point where a solid mess to form a liquid, it will not change because we have increased the quantity. That, that method for used to change, that is where it will change. We'll go back to the chemical properties and we'll ask, how does the substance react in the presence of air? Those are what affects chemical properties. Presence of air, it will affect it like the rusting of iron, to continue to keep iron outside. You know what happened to it. It will rust. It will become very brittle. It has changed. Properties will change. If we react it with an acid, it will change. It cannot come back. If we react it with water, the same thing. And then other chemicals. Those are what affects the chemical properties. So briefly, these are the properties of a matter. What is the physical change? A physical change has no effect on the chemical bonding of the compounds and does not result in the production of new bonds. This means that the same type of compound or component that existed at the start of the transition are still present at the conclusion. You know, if we crush a can, you have not changed anything. What you have changed is the physical structure of that can. Melting of sugar. Chopping of wood. If you decide to chop wood into smaller bits, you have not changed that. You have changed the shape of the wood. Finish. That's what you change. You have smaller pieces. But the composition of that wood remains the same. If you mix sand and water, that mixture of sand and water, when you drain out the water, you will still get back your sand. It's an example of a physical change, you know. Or melting of ice, as we showed here. We have formed ice in the solid form. If it melts now, you know, 
It does not mean that it has changed the composition of that liquid water. That liquid water remains the same. The only thing that has changed is that shape. The eyes have not changed to become a liquid. Chemical properties of matter. Chemical properties are those that can only be changed by changing the molecular structure or chemical composition of a substance. Is an attribute to transform one type of matter into another. Chemical properties include flammability. When you burn any matter, you have changed it. The toxicity, the acidity, that is the ability of solutions to form reactions with various metals and bases and produce salts. You have changed that matter. You cannot take it back. You cannot form back to acid and base the moment you react. That is chemical properties. Formation of bonds. Formation of ionic, covalent, metallic, and hydrogen bonding, etc. Heat is being applied here. Heat of combustion affects it. Delta H equals to delta H product minus delta H reactant. It has changed at the end. Chemical reactions are often irreversible. For example, when we burn wood, it undergoes chemical transformation and turns into ashes. Ashes cannot be converted back to wood. We have an assignment. Thank you for being patient to this position. What are the three major states of matter and how do they differ from one another? Differentiate between chemical and physical change. What is the difference between intensive and extensive properties? Give two examples each. Thank you for being patient to watch this video to this end. I appreciate all of you. I'm grateful. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. Share it to your children, to your students. They need them. Those of them in the secondary school, or those of them in the university, they need them. Even parents, I think it's a refreshing of what you learned in the secondary school. Thank you very much.